Welcome back. It seems a bit of a misnomer that databases are all about storing data, yet the thing that we're often after is the data that's missing. Analytics SQL can help you with that. Let's check it out. Now, we're doing short two minute sessions really to help you solve real problems, not just talk about syntax. And in this session, we're going to look at finding the gaps in the data and how we can use analytics to help us with that. Let's do a 10 second recap. So far, we really have only just touched the surface with analytics. We really haven't looked at partitioning clauses. We haven't looked at windowing clauses. We've just looked at the functions, some of the functions, not all of them, and the order byte clause. But even with that, we can solve some powerful problems. So far, we've covered rank, dense rank, and row number. Let's put them to use today. So databases store data, obviously. But the problem there is what they don't store is missing data, because if they did, it wouldn't be missing anymore. So finding data that is missing is quite a challenge. Let's look at an example now. Let's say we're a laboratory firm and we collect samples and we're meant to collect lab samples every single day. Let's have a look at our data. Here I have my lab samples table and you can see that although I've collected plenty of samples, I've still got some missing data. You can see between the 4th and the 7th of January, I didn't get any samples from the 10th to the 14th and from the 16th to the 19th. And of course, your manager then comes to you and says, show me the consecutive groups of samples. And I, oh, of course, I need that report ASAP because that's what managers do. So let's use our knowledge of analytics to build that up. This is the desired result. You can see we went from the 1st to the 4th and have four consecutive days, 7th to the 10th for four consecutive days, and so on. We're going to use a thing called the Tarbabitasan method, which is a way of grouping data. Let's build it up and see how we go. First thing we're going to use is our row number that we've already seen from the previous video. It simply gives an ascending number in order of the date taken. Now we're going to take that query. Let's now subtract that row number from the date taken column. You can subtract numbers from dates, it just removes the number of days. I've called the column LB for lower bound. You can see it forms effectively a lower bound for contiguous sets of dates. So for our 1st to the 4th of December, they all map to the 30th of November. 7th to the 10th maps to the 2nd of December, and so on for the other ranges. The value of the lower bound doesn't really matter. What is important though is that it's the same for each of the contiguous sets. So we can just group by that to find our information. So let's take that query we saw from the previous page, and we're going to wrap it in an inline view just with a normal group by, using min and max and the count. And there we have the desired result, simple as that, just using an analytic and wrapping it with a group by. You can run this demo yourself just by clicking on the live SQL link below. The next session will do more functions involved in ranking and will add more power to the syntax. Thanks for watching and don't forget, keep it simple with SQL. See you again soon.